welcome to this next lecture on uh, fundamentals of acoustics. Today we will be looking at mean square values, mean square values. Why is that? We have been saying that let us say L p is given by 10 log to the base 10 p square RMS by p square reference and once we get to p square RMS. p square RMS by p square reference which is equal to 10 to the power L p by 10. Okay. Now, we are what I kept saying is we are in linear units. Okay. So, these can be added what we mean is mean square values can be added, mean square values can be added. Okay. Then the added mean square values again can be subjected to logarithm, this is what we have been doing. Okay. So, let us look at mean square values. Okay. So, if I have a sinusoid, a single sinusoid in the form of let us say x of t is a sin omega t, okay. then the square value let us x of t the square value is a square sin omega t, then the mean value is integral over t a square sin omega t d t 1 by t is the mean value. square sorry in square okay then the root then we take the root which results in root mean square which is this square root of 1 by t integral 0 to t a square sin square omega t dt Okay. So, let us calculate this the integral 0 to t of a square sin square omega t dt is equal to integral 0 to t a square 1 minus cos twice omega t by 2 dt. Now, cos 2 omega 2 integrated of over 0 to t gives me sin 2 omega t which goes to 0 in the limits t and 0. So, this ends up as a square by 2 which is a constant. So, only d t gets integrated which becomes a t. So, I get a square by 2 into t, but the average value is 1 over t in front 1 over t, so 1 over t, so this goes away. So, this is the mean square value, this is the mean square value and therefore, the root mean square value root of mean of square value is a over root 2, okay, where a is the peak, peak amplitude.
So, this is for a single sinusoid. Okay. Suppose we have two sinusoids, two sinusoids. Okay. How are they represented? X of t is equal to let us say a 1 sin omega t plus a 2 uh, sin omega 1 t a 2 sin omega 2 t. Now, it is important that these two be different, these two frequencies be different and we call them incoherent sources, incoherent sources. In some statistical way there is nothing common, okay. there is nothing common to them that is uh, that is the general idea of incoherent. Okay. If these two are same frequencies then you have to add them up frequency wise first of all, if both are omega 1 then you have to add it. In this case they will just become a 1 plus a 2 sin omega t. If omega 1 is omega, omega 2 is omega, the sum is just a 1 plus a 2. So, that is different. Okay. So, they have to be different and in the general sense we call them incoherent sources. Okay, that is when this addition that I am going to show is possible. Okay. So, now uh, in so let us say so now let us square them square first of all square right first we square x square of t okay. that gives me a 1 square sin square square omega 1 t plus a 2 square sin square omega 2 t plus 2 a 1 a 2 sin omega 1 t sin omega 2 t. Okay. So, now we take the square and we take the mean value. Okay. When we take the mean value, we put a 1 over t, we integrate from 0 to t, okay. then we have this whole term over here dt. Now, omega 1 has a certain period, omega 2 has a different period. So, this for this t is actually a certain time which is long enough and so we put a limit t tending to infinity. Okay. So, if we take the mean now, if we take the mean what we will get is a limit t tending to infinity 1 over t okay, integral 0 to t a 1 square by 2 1 minus cos twice omega 1 t plus a 2 square by 2 1 minus cos 2 omega t t plus a 1 a 2 cos omega 1 minus omega 2 t minus cos omega 1 plus omega 2 t. Okay. And uh, let me close it here this is d t. Now, 0 to t this goes this integral goes to 0, 0 to t this integral goes to 0. This a 1 square by 2 is a constant, a 2 square by 2 is a constant. So, there is a d t that becomes a t, there is a 1 over t it cancels off. So, we get first of all a 1 square by 2 plus a 2 square by 2. Okay. Then we have um, 
then we have what do we have here mm limit t tending to infinity 1 over t integral 0 to t a 1 a 2 cos omega 1 minus omega 2 t minus cos omega 1 plus omega 2 t dt. Okay. So, this becomes a 1 square by 2 plus a 2 square by 2 plus limit t tending to infinity 1 over t a 1 a 2. So, this we have uh, sin omega 1 minus omega 2 t by omega 1 minus omega 2 minus sin omega 1 plus omega 2 t by omega 1 plus omega 2 over the limit 0 to t. Okay. So, now here this is a 1 square by 2 plus a 2 square by 2 plus a 1 a 2 limit t tending to infinity 1 by t first term is sin omega 1 minus omega 2 t by omega 1 minus omega 2 minus evaluated as 0 this term is 0 then minus sin omega 1 plus omega 2 t by omega 1 plus omega 2 okay here also this term evaluated at t equal to 0 is 0 so i get only two terms now here these are well behaved if omega 1 is not equal to omega 2 right if omega 1 is omega 2 we have to do a separate addition right at the beginning then we have a 1 over and the numerator as t goes to infinity is still a sinusoid now this 1 over t tending to infinity what it does is it will take out this term it will take out this term so the mean square value so, the mean square value of two sinusoids uh, which is a 1 sin omega 1 t and a 2 sin omega 2 t is simply a 1 square by 2 plus a 2 square by 2. So, this is a mean square value of first sinusoid, this is a mean square value of second sinusoid, add, add mean square values. That is what we have been doing. From L p we have been getting to p square RMS by p square reference. So, this is the mean square value and then we have been adding mean square values for various machines or various locations of a single machine after we brought it down to this unit. Then after all the mean square values were added we again subjected that to the log okay. 10 log to the base 10 of this etcetera. So, there is a proof that we can add if we are at the mean square level we can add them. Okay. Similarly, if we have a band of frequencies and if we have a band of next level frequencies so let us say from 100 to 200 we have one band from 200 to 400 we have another band. 
then from 400 to 800 we have another band. Then in each of these let us say we know the mean square values. Then across the band we can add the mean square values. And this will be the mean square values value across the entire band. Okay. So, now how do we use this mean square value? Okay. Now, just the mean square value, just the root mean square or the root mean square value. Okay, suppose I have a signal, I have some signal over time P of T or something and then I get a one number RMS value, just one number. Then what happens is the frequency content is lost. the frequency content is lost. Okay. So, we have to do something to not lose the frequency content. What is that? Okay. So, now because sound is involved and because we deal with machines and all over the world it is now known that if one is subjected to high sound levels, high sound levels constantly like a shop floor worker, then over a period of time he will develop health problems. it is not very healthy to be subjected to loud sound over long periods of time. Okay. So, here the human perception of sound comes in now, human perception of sound. Okay. A, a source, a source like a speaker across the frequency may be producing the same amplitude of sound at every frequency the same amplitude of sound, but the human ear human ear okay, will hear it differently. Okay. Actually let us say this is 1000 hertz, okay. let us say this is about 50 hertz or so forth and we are going up till 4 kilohertz or so this is the human voice range okay human hearing range is a little bit more hearing range human hearing range goes up till they say 20 kilohertz but it rarely does most of us will will drop out at about 12 to 15 kilohertz Okay. That means we do not hear more than that. Okay. So, now this human ear what it does is it, it has a slow resonance and it de amplifies at lower frequencies and it somewhat has the same amplitude as the source generates at 1000 hertz and then it goes up a little bit and then it starts to drop off. Okay, it has a slow resonance. Okay. In some sense if a machine is producing loud sound at 50 hertz, it may not be so important because human hearing also is low over there. If we are bringing in human perception, okay. if we are saying that a sound generated by a machine or a component should be 
also comfortable for a human human perception let's say car an automobile or a motorcycle or an auto you know when it drives by the sound it generates has to be comfortable for human perception okay if we are bringing in that aspect and let's say it is it generates some loud noise at around 50 hertz it may not be very important because human hearing is poor at that frequency okay so we are now going to bring in this human hearing aspect okay and typical male voices are in the range of 1 to 2 kilohertz typically and female voices are uh, uh, you know just a little higher from 3 to 5 kilohertz or something okay that is dominantly okay so now one thing is that uh one thing is that we have to bring in bring in human perception okay it is brought in through what is called an a waiting a waiting okay a waiting is nothing but a waiting on the frequency okay in accordance with human hearing okay now this is a very subjective field okay subjective and very difficult area i mean how how did we figure out that at 1000 hertz there is no amplification or decrease in the perception okay whatever the whatever the machine makes that's exactly what ear picks up how did we know that so there were hundreds of uh, thousands of people brought in and then uh, then they were asked questions about how do you feel is this loud is it louder and so that's the way we have figured out that human hearing as a res slow resonance so very subjectively on an average this has been figured out okay so it's not at all an easy job it's not as easy as just plotting a curve over here okay that subjectivity across human individuals has been brought to some level where we can plot curves confidently okay so that's the a waiting a wait a wait okay so i'll talk about it more now we are going to bring in the frequency content okay now suppose there is a machine that wakes Uh, uh, sound okay and that sound uh, looks like this okay and we want to know the frequency content frequency content okay what we do is what is called a narrow band analysis and also constant band constant bandwidth constant bandwidth analysis what we mean is that if one is familiar with fast fourier transforms okay if you take 1 second of data you can get a 1 hertz resolution you accept this we are not going to go into fft is here okay that means let's say this is 1 second of data then in the frequency domain i can get 1 hertz resolution that means i can get the information at 10 hertz i can get information at 11 hertz i can get information at 12 hertz and so forth okay so 1 hertz resolution requires 1 second acquisition of data okay now what i say is that once 1 hertz resolution may not be required may not be required at 
it may be too fine, it may be a little too fine, okay. You have a machine that has come in uh, and you want to evaluate it and maybe you want to evaluate it in the frequency domain also, okay. And so, it is it's, uh, less important to evaluate it at every hertz, how much noise it makes at every hertz. Let us say you are interested from, from 100 hertz to 4000 hertz, then at every you know every single hertz you have a frequency line and you are trying to evaluate what the levels are, it may be just a little too fine, okay. And it may be expensive also. Now you must be thinking one second, one second what is what is one second of data, okay. One second is just nothing, acquisition of one second. But let me tell you, suppose we have a some transmission uh, making in noise or defective and we bring in for testing, okay. Typically we may instrument it with some 10 microphones, we may instrument it with uh, 10 accelerometers. Okay, we want to characterize it well. Okay, we are working in an industry where we have borrowed this transmission to characterize it, or it has some trouble, some other group has sent it to us, so they want it characterized. Okay, so now there are 20 instruments, you know, this, this may not be available again and again. Okay, after this, it may go for some um, paint job or some, some other gear replacement, etc., something it may go in one day, okay. So, now you will acquire as much data as you want on this. So, there are 20 sensors, okay. And suppose you are interested in a frequency range up till 20 kilohertz, you know human hearing they say 20 kilohertz. Then you will have to sample at about 50 kilohertz, you have to sample at about 50 kilohertz properly, okay. This is called the Nyquist criterion or Shannon sampling theorem, okay. In order to properly represent 20 kilohertz, you will need about sampling th at 50 kilohertz. So, now what your day is taking is 1 e to the power 6, 1 million samples per second, okay. Now, we have just wanted one second data, right? One second data to get one hertz, so one million samples in, is enough, okay? So what is the big deal? No, you will you will need a, a little bit more. There will be some transients. There will be some transients, okay? So you need to take a little bit of data before, and then the steady state happens, and that may be one second. And then you may take a little bit beyond also, so that then you truncate this piece to be one second. Okay, then uh, uh, so you may end up taking more data, and then you don't know uh, when the next machine will be available. When the machine will be available, so you'll take it under different load conditions, different conditions. Okay, and slowly, slowly you will see that your data disk is getting full. Okay, and so now you have to sit with this much data and analyze. That's that's the next level. Okay, and not just that. Suppose, suppose there is uh, there is one gear pair that is meshing. Okay, one gear pair that is meshing, and their mesh frequency is hundred point one, and then another gear pair that is meshing and their mesh frequency is 100.11, okay. So now you want to figure out which gear pair is actually misbehaving or creating the noise, then you need a resolution of 0 0.01 second, I mean sorry 100 hertz and this is 100.11 hertz, okay. So, 
So, the frequency resolution is 0 0.01 hertz which means you need about 100 seconds of data you see suddenly how ok. So, if you want to do this kind of narrow band analysis narrow band analysis it can be expensive and unnecessary ok. So, we will we'll continue with this idea I will stop this lecture we will continue with this idea in the uh, next class thank you.